conclusion inevitable. It was a jump to conclusions, Matt. My conclusion was that this idea was not a practical deterrent. My only conclusion can be that it was a Sith Lord. In conclusion. Hello there, folks. Welcome back to In Conclusion, the only movie podcast set in the greatest city in the world, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm Dan O'Keefe, and joining me as always is Anna Otto. Anna, Happy New Year. How are you? Happy New Year, Dan. Um, I'm all right. Like I told you, I was uh, just solidifying my wedding guest list, which is, you know, something I decided to do off of a stress impulse rather than sit down with my fiance and make sure we were on the same page. I just ran out of her office and screamed names at him and said, do they need a plus one? So that's kind of where I'm at today. <laughs> that's the way to do it, though. Don't Do all your wedding planning so separate from each other and then meet up once a month and be like, what do you think about this? And they'll be like, why would you think that? And you could just do that monthly yes. until you get married. I have referred to our wedding registry as my registry mm-hmm. multiple times. Oh, yeah. Woo! What is the Ugh. most absurd thing on your registry? Oh, God. Well, it was sheet garters, but then my mom got me those for Christmas. What are sheet garters? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it holds your sheets in place so they don't fly off the oh, bed just like gosh. garters hold your socks up. <laughs> I was so excited about them. They have been slaying my world. Okay, I don't have to get rid of any sheets now because they are snatched to my bed. (laughs) And I am a very active sleeper. I was talking about them so much that my boss was like, can you send me the link to those? And I was like, absolutely, girl, just hang on. Jesus Christ. Um, Other than that, it's probably this one charcuterie platter that's in the shape of the state of Wisconsin. Okay. Because I am nothing if not a home girl. Yeah, you're very cheesy. I am. I'm just gotta sit with that. I sit love it. Let dairy. it sit out like a charcuterie board. <laughs> um, speaking of charcuterie, in no way whatsoever, uh, the movie that we're talking mm-hmm. about today is Mannequin. Have you had you seen did Mannequin you see... before this? No, because did you see the text I sent? You? I did. Your text that uh, nothing's gonna stop us now by Starship is in the movie. I would dare to say that I'm a Starship fan. Are you a fan of all iterations of Starship? Um, Only, okay, I'm not an actual fan. I'm a casual fan. Okay. But I love this song, and I love We Built This City, which I think are arguably, they're two. <laughs> no, I like Waiting for a Star to Fall, too. Okay, that's one deeper cut. I did it. I'm not a casual fan anymore. Good job. Um, It is Thank very you. funny the way the different generations view We Built This City. Um, because when it was released, We Built This City was considered one of the worst songs of all time. Listen, I didn't say it was good. I just said it was a bop, you know? Uh, I like it. It can still be a vibe. And it is a vibe. Mm -hmm. I do think it's really funny that Starship evolved from Jefferson Airplane, meaning the same band that made White Rabbit and Somebody to Love made We Built This City on rock and roll. Listen, sometimes you gotta evolve to stay with it. You can't see the little dance I just did, but I did a little dance. Okay. And sometimes you gotta just morph and evolve to stay relevant (laughs) unfortunately look at taylor swift she's morphed was once a country star and now she's a pop queen a pop icon some might call her truly with no i don't want to get attacked by swifties you're gonna talk about travis kelsey because i think about him 24 7 no travis kelsey's fine what about taylor swift is interesting Oh, um, you're a man, so that's why you're <laughs> <What>? saying that. <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I liked her music when I was in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. I distinctly remember where I was when my friend came up to me 
in eighth grade and was like, I just heard Teardrops on My Guitar by this girl, Taylor, and she is so talented. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I knew this girl had to be serious because she did not like country music, but she was really into Taylor Swift. Okay. And so I gave her a listen and I was like, as a girly who likes country, this is kind of hitting. And then she grew on me. And then once I got to high school, I was a big fan. She just makes music for the girlies, you know, for the hopeless romantics. Oh, yeah. I'm not and disputing that at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just think her music is fun. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I fell out of it for a while. And recently I got back into liking her. And I'm really enjoying rediscovering how um, how good of a lyricist she is. This is a Swifty podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm my... I'm not disputing that about her music. I, I think her music mm-hmm. is everything that you said it is. Um, Thank you. Like I made the music. Yes. Thank you. You wrote it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, I did. My more question, mm-hmm. what's interesting about Taylor Swift that leads She's to... freaking gorgeous. That's not interesting. Kim Cattrall is freaking gorgeous. In Mannequin. Um, Yeah, thank you for finishing that. No offense, Kim, but from what I've heard, her personality is ugly. Like, a lot of people are gorgeous. What about Taylor Swift causes this massive, like, level of adoration leading into her personal life that others don't get? She does that whole thing where she's, like, always keeping secrets, and they're like, what's Blondie up to now? And, like, they also call her Allison, which is her middle name, which I don't get, That's but I'm weird. not, apparently, I'm not in below the surface, I guess. I'm still skating like a freaking, I don't know, those bugs that skate on ponds. <laughs> so I, <laughs> um, people really like her costumes. Mm-hmm. She has a flair for the dramatic, which we love. Um. She's very, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Theater girl. theater girl. Yeah, she does have theater girl energy, which, you know, I love. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just think her music is relatable for girls who've ever had their heart broken, which is everyone, essentially. Sure, and, yeah. You know, and I think, like, it's it's less about what makes her so stand out and more so... How is it that she's able to be who she is and yet be so relatable at the same time? That's why people don't like her is because she's essentially, she's rich and famous, but she's essentially still managed to capture the whole, I'm just the girl next door. I'm just like you. I watch Law and Order SVU and I like to watch Grey's Anatomy and blah, blah, blah. And I like boys and my heart gets broken. And I don't know. You know, I think Taylor Swift just has charisma out the wazoo, and mm-hmm. I think she's incredibly smart. I think she's a wonderful businesswoman. And that's why I don't like her. Oh, because she's Dan stealing hates women. This yeah. just it. <laughs> <laughs> she's stealing profits from me in whatever oh, business we cross over in. Dan, bad news. You're married to a woman, oh. and you're friends with several women. No, stop it. I really? know. Really? Can you believe? I know. Uh. The perils of heterosexuality. Oh, me daily. <laughs> when I wake up next to a man who I love, ugh. Um, anyway, back to the movie we're talking about. It's Mannequin, uh, released in Woo! 1987, directed by Michael Gottlieb, who later went on to direct A Kid in King Arthur's Court. I don't know that movie, but it sounds like snooze fest for me. I've never seen it either. Starring Andrew McCarthy, Kim Cattrall, Estelle Getty, G.W. Bailey, and James Spader. Released on February 13th, 1987. It's a Valentine's Day movie. Oh, Valentine's Day. Yes. With a budget of $7.9 million. It made $42.7 million at the box office. And mm. on Rotten Tomatoes, what do you think it has? Oh, I looked accidentally, and I think it had like a like a. I wanted to say sixty one, but that feels high. So I'm gonna say twenty six. That was me slapping my brain. Mm. In case you were curious, it has a twenty percent. Ah, 
close. Critical consensus. Mannequin is a real <laughs> dummy. Outfitted with a ludicrous concept <laughs> and a painfully earnest script that never springs to life, despite the best efforts of an impossibly charming Kim Cattrall. I will say, watching this movie the whole time, I was like, ugh. If only I was watching Life Size with Tyra Banks and Lindsay Lohan right now. Uh, Leonard Malton, critic, called it absolute rock bottom fair, dispiriting for anyone who remembers what movie comedy should be. And Roger Ebert gave it a half star. A lot of bad Ooh, movies are fairly throbbing with life. Mannequin is dead. The wake lasts <laughs> one and a half hours, and then we can leave the theater. Not the wake. Dang. That is scathing. I, I will say I did. Um, we were talking about Saltburn at work very casually because, you know, that movie's kind of risque. Yeah. But I was like, yeah, I wanted to watch that, but I couldn't because we don't have Netflix. And I ended up watching Mannequin last night for my podcast. And my coworker was like, <laughs> you watched Mannequin? And I was like, yes. She's like, that's quite different than Saltburn. Yes. And I was like, well, my options were limited to one. Very, so. <laughs> very different. Mm -hmm. Having recently watched Saltburn, I like Mannequin a lot more. <laughs> Okay, don't tell me anything because I want to be scared just like anybody, everybody else. But I have to wait till next week when we can re-up our Netflix because they canceled it. So we were removed from it because it was Gage's parents' account. Mm -hmm. And they removed us. Not Gage's parents, Netflix. And then we tried to get added back on as an extra, like, account for whatever, $8 extra a month or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they canceled Gage's parents' entire account. Oh, wow. Okay. So Gage and I are just going to get our own next week. I don't know why we have to wait till next week. I don't remember why he said that. That's weird. But that's, that's why weird. we're, yeah. I, I don't remember why. I think it had something to do with, like, a credit card ending or something. I don't remember. Um, I have good news for you, though. It's on Amazon Prime. <gasps> Shut the front door! <laughs> Dan, you don't need Netflix to watch Saltburn. Oh, my God. Everyone, this just in. Tomorrow, I'm going to be scared all night. <laughs> <laughs> no one bother me. I'm busy being horrified. Um, Mannequin has two songs that were released as singles from the soundtrack. Uh, one, I only knew one of them. In My Wildest Dreams by Belinda Carlisle, which plays over the opening credits. Oh, yeah. Didn't love that song. Uh, Sorry, Belinda. I didn't either. I love Belinda Carlisle. Okay. She, you know, everyone's bound to have a flop every yeah, once in a while. Right? And the other one, Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now by Starship. Absolute banger. I was screaming the lyrics, best part of the movie. Because of Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now, Mannequin is an Academy Award-nominated film. Honestly, A Broken Clock is Right Two Times a Day. Mm -hmm. That song is so good. I cannot begin to tell you it's on my Yacht Rock playlist. Like, I love that song. It is written by albert hammond and diane warren albert hammond mm -hmm. uh wrote and sung the song it never rains in southern california mm -hmm. he also wrote uh, the air that i breathe and a bunch of other songs mm. um and diane warren wrote if i could turn back time by share <gasps> Oh my god, that's a karaoke classic. How do I live? <gasps> Stop. Banger after banger. Continue. I don't want to miss a thing. Oh my god, her career is studded. Blame It on the Rain by Millie Vanilli. Yes. Uh, we were speaking about her. Uh, Say Don't Go by Taylor Swift. <gasps> oh, I like that song. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> she also wrote Each one. Unbreak My Heart by Tony Braxton. Oh, these are all bangers. Yeah. These are absolutely all bangers. No wonder the song hit so hard. And those are only some of her songs that hit the top ten. She is a prolific songwriter. Dang. I can't wait to go cry, even though it's got an upbeat rhythm, to say don't go later. <laughs> I've never heard it. Oh, you sh oh my Oh, my God. Dan? Sometimes I think about the fact that once upon a time I told you I was going to make you a Barry Manilow playlist mm -hmm. and then I kept forgetting and I still think to myself, I should still do it. Now you're going to open it. It's going to be all Barry Manilow and say don't go. You're just going to 
send me a link at like 2 a.m. Yes. To a Barry Manilow playlist. It's going to be called Bury Me in Manilow. <laughs> um, so this is the first time you watched Mannequin, correct? I didn't even know it existed before last week. The reason we are watching these is because Mannequin is one of my wife's favorite childhood films. Which is crazy to me because respectfully, she could have been watching... <laughs> Life size. Yeah, right? <laughs> because that's what I watched in my grandma's house. Yeah, same. So this is crazy. Um she we were watching this yesterday and oh boy was she just immediately snapped back into it. She was like watching me at specific points to see my reaction. Everything. All she was all in. And honestly, Anna, this is for you. I love you, girl. This ain't it, but I, I'm just going to say I still love you. It's just hard for me to say it right now. You know, <laughs> this movie was rough. I'm going to disagree with you. You loved it? I did not. No, did. I did you not love it. Camp. I thought it was very fun, though. I thought it was very light. Uh, okay. Very, they're very low stakes. Oh, I mean, there was... Literally the lowest stakes possible. Nothing to Will he about. get fired from his retail job? Um, but I, I, there's just something about a movie like this where when I think of what a how disgusted I am whenever I watch a Hallmark movie... <laughs> Sick to your, you would hate going to Gage's parents' house. I would. Um... I think of something like this and be like, this is functionally a 90 minute throwaway movie, whatever. This is so miles ahead better in every way than something like that. That if this sort of movie is the like, which apparently it was based on the reviews in the eighties, the baseline for like a throwaway schlocky film yeah, I mean, this is, it's giving go to the theater and make out, you know? Yeah, and you know what? That's fine. This movie knows what it is. And it's interest. It's at least fun. Yeah, I mean, I didn't not have a good time. Mm-hmm. I didn't not laugh. I was immediately in when the opening title said Ancient Egypt thousands of years ago just after lunch. At that, I was like, oh, my my eyes could not have rolled harder. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I just also didn't understand <laughs> why. Uh, why know, Ancient Egypt? Jokes in this movie. Yes. I don't know. Why couldn't they have been like colonial? I feel like it would have made more sense. Well, but I guess like they wanted to really emphasize how long ago it was. Yeah, then you wouldn't have gotten the fun animated opening title sequence of her. Why was she a cat, Dan? Uh, because Egypt. Yes. I also. Uh, it just it, the part I'm getting ahead of myself when she says she dated Christopher Columbus. Mm-hmm. The scream I scream. <laughs> Anyway. Um, also, I think that, and we'll talk more about it as we go into the actual movie. Yes. I really love the type of character that James Spader is playing in this. He's the annoying board member who gets fired and then joins the other company who's trying to get it to sell. Yeah. yeah. I, he's very funny, and it's also very weird seeing him do this. Considering this is the guy who voiced Ultron. Yeah, Gage was laughing so hard. He's like, that's James Spader. And then he was in Boston Legal and like the Blacklist. Very different role. Uh, and Robert California in The Office. Lord above. But his sort of, his character type of person who everybody hates. But then he also hates everybody. I love. It. I think it's hilarious. 
like he he hates all his henchmen. Yeah. Um, uh, because he thinks they're the dumbest like people in the world because they are. Mm-hmm. He didn't use the word bumbling near enough. No. But yeah. Um, I I found him very fun, very funny. All right, all right. Maybe I'm into it just because everyone in this movie, aside from James Spader, they're all cutie pies. Yeah, they were all really cute. The guy had kind of a little kid baby face. A little bit. He was cute. I'll give it to you. When he had his hair slicked back, I was like, you look like a like a 10-year-old. He, yeah, he just looked so young. Mm-hmm. Like, it just felt so weird. But, you know, as someone else, as someone who has a baby face, and people probably, I always, okay, don't judge me, but ever since my grandma said that Gage looked 40, <laughs> And when he and I first started dating, somebody asked how much older he was than me. Uh-huh. I'm like, do I look that young? Do I look like a child bride? You like, know, is that? That could be it. Where we're at? That could be it. I'm worried. So I think I get it. I'm worried that as I age, mature, <laughs> um, that I will get a, what I call a Charlie Kirk face. What does that do mean? Do you know who Charlie Kirk is? No. He's the head or something of Turning Point USA, which is like the annoying young Republican group. Um, oh. And he has a face. He has a very large head, but not a face that fills up his whole head. Oh, no, Dan. And that's what I'm worried will happen to me. Like a pinched face. Yeah. Like... That's rough. I don't want that. I can't handle that. I need a way to grow my face. Have you tried, like, opening your mouth really far? (laughs) That's all I can offer. Uh, Let's get into the movie. Let's do it to it. Uh, So, Mannequin starts off. We're in ancient Egypt just after lunch. Um, I'm already punching the air. (laughs) Emmy is hiding from her mom, refusing to stay with a pharaoh in a pyramid um, because she doesn't want to. uh, Because she wants to find true love instead of going into an arranged marriage. Who among us has it? I mean, yeah, you're right. I know when I was arranged into marriage, I had to fight for myself. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah, I lost. Gage and I engaged in a fist fight the second, like, before he proposed. First, we got into a fist fight. <laughs> it sounds more like an enraged marriage. Yeah, it was. Um, It was also just, you know, for spice. <laughs> <laughs> um, So, she prays to the gods, the Egyptian gods, to find true love. Uh, and then she vanishes before her mother's eyes. Her mother looking like the evil stepmother from Tangled but more just bumbling than anything. Yeah. I didn't see Evil Stepmother from Tangled, but yes. Or maybe just Cher. She was giving Cher. Do you know that Cher is short? For Cheryl? Oh, wait. (laughs) Height-wise. This is so embarrassing. I'm an idiot. (laughs) Uh, No, I, I always assumed she was like a Morticia type. Right? She's 5'7". She's she? not that short, but she's much shorter than you would okay. expect. I was going to say pause. She's taller than me, but yes, that is shorter than I would expect. I thought she would be like six feet tall. I guess it's because when I saw her like standing next to someone last, it was in a clip from Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Mm. And Kim Kardashian's 5'2", so yeah. she looked tall yeah. compared to her. And Sonny Bono was 5'5". Five five. Mm-hmm. So... That also So she did it. have like a little Morticia situation going on yes. with Sonny. Um, okay. Anyway, then we flash forward to 1987 Philadelphia, where mm. young Jonathan Switcher, Switcher, I hardly know her, is a sculptor working in a mannequin warehouse, and he builds a mannequin. He thinks it's his masterpiece. It does not look He's like Kim like- Cattrall. He, no, first of all, no, it doesn't. And second of all, he's getting kind of weird with that mannequin. He is. He's like calling her the most beautiful thing he's ever seen, which is fine. Like, appreciate your art. I'm glad he's passionate about what he does. Mm-hmm. 
but like with the right music and a couple of different editing choices this movie could have been about a perv like <laughs> well that is kind of how he's seen by the outside world because every time they see him he's like I'm making saying. out with a mannequin if we cut out all the parts of Kim Cattrall, he's just a creep. Sounds like the ideal movie. Um, mm-hmm. He gets fired because he takes way too much time to make his mannequins uh, because he's a sculptor. He's an artist, and every artist falls in love with his work. Um, um, I pretty much hate most projects that I've done, but that's out of frustration. Yeah, so. same, right? Um, mm-hmm. So then he takes a bunch of odd jobs, and he gets fired because he keeps trying to make, be artistic with them. And his girlfriend, Roxy Shield. I wanted to like her so bad. Um, she works at the department store Illustra. And it's very funny looking at the things that people get embarrassed by. She was embarrassed to get picked up by this cute guy on a motorcycle after work. Yeah. I was like, are you kidding me? Most people would be like, wow. I guess she's with like all these businessmen. Mm-hmm. Because in real life, I feel like people would be like, yeah, that's my man on the on the, on the hog. hog. On the Harley <laughs> Davidson motorcycle that he rides. I clocked that Harley. I was like, are you kidding me? That's cool. Yeah. Um, but we have been in and around the Midwest where there's Harley Fest and all that stuff. And it's also 2024. So Yes, it's 37 years later. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she dumps him she calls him a flake because also he misses their dates that's fair um, and then he's riding his motorcycle it starts raining his motorcycle breaks down in the rain I uh, hate when that happens and he goes past yeah. the Prince and Company department store and then he sees his mannequin in the window it's fun to see your work in public it is fun to see your work in public, but not to the point where I want to stand out in the rain. I stand out in the rain and look, basically, ogle through the window. Yeah. Like, I definitely understand being excited about seeing your work in public, mm-hmm. but I just... <sighs> Calm down for a second, right? Mm-hmm. It's doing too much. It'll probably be there tomorrow. It absolutely will be there tomorrow. Um... So then the next morning, he goes past the department store again where they are raising up a 100th anniversary sign. Um, And as they're doing it, without blocking off anything below it, they've done nothing to secure this work site that they are on. Um, Jeez Louise, it was stressing me out. He, one side of the sign falls. He saves the store owner. Uh, from being crushed by the sign, and then he swings back and forth on it, which is also next to a live open wire. Yeah, I was stressed <laughs> out by all of this. Why? It was not. What are they doing? Why is there just a wire hanging down? They've not taken any precautions at all. I'm surprised that that nobody's shown up to shut them down. It's very a very strange setup but anyway he saves her from getting crushed and she hires him um as a stock boy and also working there mr richards james spader uh who is a secret illustra double agent trying to get the company bought trying to get price and company bought by illustra love corporate sabotage um and he immediately hates him I mean, <laughs> he's a stock boy. Yeah. What's he do? He's just stock. Like, what is? Why does he immediately hate him? Have you ever worked a job like that where you're stocking shelves in a retail store, Dan? I have not. <gasps> it's soul sucking. No, I get that. Why does James Spader hate him? Oh, I understand hating up. Uh, well, I had a. I mean, I think sometimes when I worked in retail, I think some of the bosses got mad that I was like, you know. But I was also sixteen to twenty-two when I held these jobs. Let's let's be very clear. It was while I was in school. Uh huh. Some of those people who worked there and that was their job would get annoyed because that was very clearly like 
not my life's work and I clearly want it to be anywhere else. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, in this case, I think James Spader just didn't like his his happy-go-lucky personality. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if that's what you could call it, but his I'm doing my best personality. Yeah. He he's his light and airy, flighty person, but not flighty. I don't know how to describe him. He's Je ne sais doing his quoi. Best. Yes. Je ne peux pas. Um, the security guard already doesn't like him either. But Jonathan makes a friend with the window dresser, Hollywood Montrose. I did not know what to think of this because it was um definitely. Stereotypical. The word. Yeah. I didn't want to laugh at his jokes. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I felt bad because it was giving Titus. Yes. From Kimmy Schmidt. I also keep forgetting that we're recording differently today. BTW. So if I sound really far away, it's because I'm leaning hard into my microphone <laughs> right now. <laughs> um. It was giving Titus from Kimmy Schmidt, but not in a way that came from a place of love. No, it did seem like they were making fun of him for being gay. Yeah, it definitely felt more in jest than it did like, oh, he's just an eccentric person. But I think that's because nobody else in the film was being made fun of. I think you know, the like only other person of... being made fun of is the Italian pervert. Um which also did not sit well with me. Oh, that because... totally landed with me because of how absurd it is. Yeah, I guess it was just the absurdity. Like, it's just one of those things where I was watching it and I was like, the 80s really were a different time. Like, I really mm -hmm. enjoy movies from the 80s. But watching this, I'm like, there are so many things in here. We've come so far, especially with, like, the gay community. We have a lot of work still to do, obviously. But looking at this and seeing... It was nice that Hollywood could be friends with the lead without it being like, oh, he's flirting with him or something like that. And also, at one point, when Jonathan is talking to the security guard, um, I don't remember the exact line, but the security guard is like, you feel comfortable being friends with that fairy or something? And then Jonathan is that like, me... but then Jonathan's response is like, better than being a closed minded bigot. And I was like, yes. Yep. Yes. True. But anytime they said the word fairy, I literally wanted to jump out of my skin. I know it's not as bad as some of the other ones, mm -hmm. but it's not great. No, it's not. No, it's not. I think no. two of the films, I'm not saying credit because this, I don't think it was intentional. Hollywood is a collection of stereotypes uh, yes. and played by a straight actor, which it's straight actor playing a gay character, gay actor playing a straight character. That's a whole different conversation. Um, yeah. That which is polarizing in a lot of different ways, but that's not what we're talking yeah. about right now. But I do think that in spite of him being a collection of stereotypes, Everything that his character actually does in the movie is not like bad acts or bad action. He he shoots cops with a fire hose. He drives a cool car. Yeah. I mean, nobody makes fun of the way he dresses, really. I mean, like, it's commented on like one time at the beginning, I think. Mm-hmm. But other than that, everybody just seems to accept him for who he is. And I think metatextually, seeing it now, he feels much less like a, <laughs> let's make fun of this gay guy for being gay. It, it feels, mm -hmm. that feels like a character like, like Titus. Like in Kimmy mm -hmm. Schmidt, where it's like, now nah, he's kind of cool. Exactly. Like, I feel like it's a weird ground because I feel like 
that might not have been the intention. I feel like it might have come from a place of wanting to judge, especially knowing what was going on in the gay communities at the time. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad this is so bare minimum. Yes. I'm glad that they didn't like paint him out to be a monster or something like that, because that was so much of the stereo. Like, I, you know what I mean? That was so much of the the word at the time, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, they painted him out to be a quirky person, but a normal person. And yes, he was built on stereotypes. And I'm not saying the character is not flawed, Mm -hmm. but I'm saying, I think, I don't know, Dan, like, I feel like I want to say that maybe there were some redeemable qualities in that he was still able to be, like you said, he's a a cool person. He's a friend. Like they weren't afraid to make him be Jonathan's friend. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I feel like I can't say that because I feel like, it might have still come from a place where people were like, oh, he's the gay character and the gays are the joke now because it's the 80s and this is the thing that we don't understand right now, so we're going to make fun of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't Whereas think that's exclusive like, to the 80s. No, I just, I'm just i just thinking in this specific mindset. Yeah. Because I feel like the 80s is when, not that when that kind of started, but it, I feel like with the AIDS crisis, it kind of got pushed into a higher light. Yes. I think that, it, it, for me at least, and I am aggressively straight in saying this. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to check my privilege yeah. at the door so hard right now. Sorry, everyone. Um, Hollywood, as a idea of a character, has aged incredibly poorly. Hollywood, as yes. an actually portrayed character on screen has aged well in spite of itself. Mm-hmm. In Because removing authorial intent and viewing him through a modern lens, he is a much better represented gay character than I would have expected from a movie yeah. that comes out in 1987. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm very surprised that for this movie, there was no scene where Hollywood tried to come on to Jonathan or something like that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, right? right. Because, I mean, we were dealing with other characters coming on to one another. I feel like it wouldn't have been surprising to me if they wrote that into the script. But I'm glad they didn't. Me too. And I'm glad that Hollywood has two pairs of sunglasses that wrap around with a swoop that to each side, depending on which... <laughs> Where he's facing in the scene. I don't know if you noticed that. I was screaming. I did because we sold. I never. They sold sunglasses like that at Party City when I worked there in high school. Mm -hmm. In the 1980s section. And I always thought it was just like, oh my gosh, these are so like loud and bold. It's a joke. It's supposed to be like the 80s, but nobody actually wore anything like this. (laughs) And then it showed up in this movie and I was like, what the heck is that? There he is. is. Uh, so, I was shocked. So that's our Hollywood discussion section. Anyway. Come back for next next week's discussion of, I don't know, Hollywood again in Mannequin 2. I look forward to it. Um, so Jonathan is putting together a window display, and then Emmy comes to life in the mannequin. She's existed for centuries as a muse. She admires the work. She admires artists and inhabits their works. Never found true love, though. And she's great at making window displays. Yeah, she's very talented for, you know, a mannequin. Yeah. The top review on Letterboxd for this movie is a good descript- character description. It's just mannequin pixie dream girl. Stop. <laughs> not mannequin pixie dream girl. It's not wrong, though. She has much, she is much more somehow grounded than the typical mannequin pixie dream girl. True. I think it's because she, you know, has explored so much. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know why I said that. She she doesn't have the tragic backstory. No. All the mannequin pixie dream girls are like, oh, I was abused. Oh, I have a brain disorder uh, uh I have nobody no else arms. likes the same music as me yeah what did you say <laughs> i have no arms 
Um, oh. <laughs> but then hers is like, yeah, I've been alive for like 4,000 years. Whatever. Let's go dance. She's like, I've been searching the world, vibing, living my life. Yeah. Good for her. And also, said this before, Kim Cattrall, incredibly attractive. She was beautiful. I've never seen Sex in the City. I don't know what she looks uh, like. I've not sat down and watched it, but I watched the movie a couple times with my mom. Uh-huh. She really liked it. I know there was beef. I can't remember if it was Kim Cattrall or somebody else, but somebody was beefing with SJP. And I think it was Kim Cattrall because she's Samantha, right? Uh, yes, she is. I think I'm 99% sure it was her. Let me do a quick boob. But, um, yeah, there was there was drama and she was not invited back. Ooh. Well, she is in... Oh, yep, it was them. Interesting. But now there's no feud all of a sudden. They kissed and made up. Yeah, she was in the newest season of And Just Like That. Hmm. Anyway, back to the movie. Makes sense why some of the cap- things are captioned And Just Like That. The beef is gone. <laughs> <gasps> that makes a lot of sense. Anyway. Um, so... Emmy can only be seen when it's only her and Jonathan. Otherwise, people see her as a mannequin. That's how it works. So, people see Jonathan making out with a mannequin a lot. He makes a bunch of windows. Which is um, gross. Hey, you know what? Rather assault a mannequin than a real person. Um, yeah, that that's my political quote. Thinking of assaulting a person? Try a mannequin instead. I don't know what I'm talking so about. Nasty. I know. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I, don't know what I mean, like, I said it once, I'll say it again. At the beginning, when he was talking about how beautiful his mannequin was and touching all over her, I had the ick. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they do make great window displays, which draw business to this failing department store. Um, I didn't realize a window display could do that much. Uh. Well, I mean, I guess what it made me think of, be, especially because they had, like, moving stuff, uh-huh. was how when I was little, my mom would take me to Marshall Fields slash Macy's. Oh, yeah. And I would go oh, get yeah. all of my um, Christmas, like, I'd go see Santa and stuff. And then we would go look at all the windows, and they usually had a theme. But it wasn't, like, clothes. It was, like, Charlie and Chocolate Factory yeah. Um. Yeah. Or like little gnomes or bears or something like that. Yeah. So they get new so business. They get They're new business. becoming a couple. Um. Roxy tries to poach Jonathan back to Illustra, uh, but he doesn't because he, now he works for people who value him. Yes, sir. Honestly, know your work. worth. Yes. Also, Roxy gets progressively slimier as this movie goes on. She does. I wanted to like her at the beginning, and then all of a sudden, she was not giving. She was taking. That's the opposite Truly. of giving, right? Thank you, Dan. Yes. It just took a second for me to really <laughs> register what you said. Um, so, the owner of the store then fires James Spader. Um and the security guard they also. They made a lot of ageist comments about her, too. How old do you think Estelle Getty was when this movie came out? Homegirl does not look older than 50. She was 64. Oh, she looked good. Yeah. In The Golden Girls, she was 64. Uh, or she was 60. Two at the beginning of the Golden Girls. Wait, wait, what's Estelle? She was Sophia. Oh, I did not even recognize her. Yeah. Okay, slay queen. Honestly, get it. Um. So then Jonathan gets promoted again to vice president of the department store. We also see his apartment. How does this unemployed dude have such a nice apartment? Gage said the same exact thing. I was like, that is gorgeous. Gage goes, how is that? Well, it's Philadelphia. (laughs) 
was like, dang, you're going to have all of Pennsylvania on my butt. It's Philly. It's the 80s. Things were different. Yeah, I guess so. Um, so then Jonathan takes Emmy through the city on a motorcycle. And people see him riding around with a dummy. I mean, let's be real, though. If he had to take that mannequin somewhere, that's probably the easiest way to carry it. I know he was just taking her on a view of the city, mm-hmm. but like, you know what I mean? That might be just the way to do it. Yeah. There's also a car chase with Jonathan and <laughs> James Spader and the, the security guard. Was, when the mannequin was flipping off the security guard. <laughs> I did laugh at that. Oh, I can't believe we even, didn't even discuss this. My favorite part of the movie, Rambo, the bulldog. Rambo, the yeah, that makes sense. The very dumb bulldog who keeps running past or sweet. getting scared. Well, you know, Gage's parents have a bulldog who's brown and white yeah. like that. And we just love a bulldog in this house, okay? We do. I do like that the dogs were equally as uninterested in fulfilling their duty. No, but whether it was Listen. Rambo or Terminator. Yes, I know Terminator, like, that's a working dog. Uh-huh. Bulldogs do not want to do a damn no, thing. No, they do not. Okay, I know they're quote-unquote scary looking. All they want to do is sit in the sun, drink their water, eat their food, get pets, and sleep. Yes. That's it. Unlike <laughs> other dogs. You did just describe Real, most dogs. Not my dog. She wants to scream. <laughs> She wants to scream until she's gotten into this thing where now if I don't give her her nightly bone, if I just give her her nightly whimsy, Mm -hmm. she'll scream and scream and scream. And I'll be like, do you have to go potty? And she'll like get all excited and act like she has to go potty. And then she'll run up the stairs and sit and stare at the cabinet where I keep her her whimsies and bones. Oh, my God. You're being reverse conditioned by a dog. She's naughty. I love her so much. She's naughty. Uh, so the next morning, Richards and Felix steal all the mannequins from the department store. Chaotic. And then Jonathan goes over to Illustra and confronts the manager there about the theft, and he offers him a job, as one does. He offers him a job with a salary of $55,000 a year. What do you think that is today? I mean, the way they were like touting it is a lot of money. I'd say a hundred thousand dollars. One hundred and fifty. Holy shnikes! Take the job, dude. Um, Absolutely, I would take that job. So, Roxy then storms off, and she loads all the stolen mannequins into a trash compactor, and is knocked out by a bunch of debris falling on top of her. Dear God. I love that. This part was chaotic. It was chaotic. This part was absolute chaos. Jonathan's getting chased through Illustra uh, by a cavalcade of security guards. What is their budget? There's a lot going on here. Um, Hollywood shows up uh, with his great car. Yeah, I loved the car cover, too, the polka dots. Yeah. Kind of iconic. Uh, and then he holds the cops at bay with a fire hose. Love that too. Hollywood, a pal is a pal, mm-hmm. you know. A friend in he need for his buddy. My, fa- I did like at the beginning when he was like, "I like you because they finally hired somebody weirder than me." Yeah, like, that was funny. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was like, "That's a roast," and that's a good roast, honestly. Uh, so these the one last mannequin going into the trash compactor it's emmy uh jonathan screaming crying throwing up grabs her by the arm right before she gets eaten up by the trash compactor uh and then he has a lot of trouble trying to pull this mannequin up and then she turns into a real person which i would think make would make it more difficult to pull her up i would think so too because last i checked mannequins weigh like 10 pounds at the most unless they're like unless they're hollow Mm -hmm. and humans generally weigh bare minimum 100 pounds i would assume that she weighs 10 times as much in human form than mannequin form they don't explain how the physics of this work maybe she's just like you know she was very thin maybe they were like assume she's five pounds 
twenty four seven. I guess. Even though that's not healthy. Throw her up in the air. We'll see. Um, Pretty sure if she only weighed five pounds, she'd be dead. But you know, what do I know? Hey, the past is different. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, so then she realizes that she's come to life in front of other people, and she's permanently alive Crazy. again. Good for her. Um, we love to see it. So Hollywood shows up, realizes that Emmy was the mannequin and alive the entire time. All the other guards come in. The police arrest all the people from Illustra for conspiracy and kidnapping and all the other stuff. Um, Roxy gets fired. Honestly, everybody should. They should have cleaned the house. Yeah. But you can't clean the house when the literal owner is trash. So, uh, The owner says that she has all of the footage of them breaking in on videotape, which Jonathan is like, mm-hmm. oh, shit. He's got my mannequin go. sex tape. But she's like, don't the worry. Mannequin sex tape. I only have what I need. The mannequin sex tape. Yeah. And then... Wink. <laughs> they, Jonathan and Emmy get married in the window of Prince and Company. Oh, I'm not even kidding you. When the song started swelling, mm-hmm. the scream I scrumped. I was so excited. I stood up. It was like I was at a concert. And they can build the stream together, standing strong forever. Nothing's going to stop them now. And that's Mannequin. Listen, my, let them say we're crazy, honestly. I don't care about that. Mm. Put your hand in my hand, baby. Don't ever look back. Let the world around us just fall apart. Oh, my God. <laughs> Maybe we can make it if we're heart to heart. I know all these we're words. We're heart to heart, yes. Come on now. I'm putting it on my wedding playlist. See you there. Too easy. I'm going to slow dance with you at your wedding to this. Oh, that could be a fun change of pace. I'm going to slow dance with Gage at your wedding to this. Oh, tell Anna we're coming in full 80s wedding gowns. This is the one time I'll allow white at my wedding so that she and I can imagine. <laughs> I'm going to slow dance with a mannequin that I bring to your wedding in a Stop. wedding dress to this. Oh, my God. Do you think if they made this movie today, it would be like a cardboard cutout of a celebrity? Uh, I think if they made this movie today, it would be Barbie. Or worse, it would be a mannequin that doesn't have a head since you never see mannequins with heads anymore. <laughs> or just have one of those like long cone heads. <gasps> oh, I'm scared. Honestly, that would be a horror movie. When did mannequins lose their faces? I think it was, like, a thing to be, like, mannequins have no race. They have nothing. Like, a mannequin can be anyone. Mm -hmm. See yourself in this mannequin without your head. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know, but I feel like I haven't seen a mannequin with a head in a hot minute. At least since the aughts. I see them. The ones at Target still have heads. No faces. But they don't no. have faces. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's mannequin. What do you think? Oh, it's camp. So this is, this is camp. What is camp? Yes. Nothing makes sense. Camp. Over the top is camp. Okay. I hated the part where the coworker was trying to like have sex with Roxy so openly. Mm-hmm. That gave me the ick. I hated it. But. That's also because, you know, I am a woman who has, in fact, experienced workplace harassment in my life. Yes. So, yes. not quite to that extreme, thankfully. But And I am an Italian man who has harassed oh. at the workplace consistently. Oh, my. I mean, when you worked at the radio station <laughs> with me, I was like, Dan, can you chill out? <laughs> no, I just, that part just, ugh. ugh. But... And like I said, I wanted to not like Hollywood because of the stereotypes. I did find him to be an enjoyable kid. I found him to be a good friend. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, Jonathan was kind of a lump. I'll say it. He was kind of a bumbling idiot. Yes. Yes. But yeah. cute. Cute, but kind of stupid. Uh, a, a very slight himbo. 
Yeah. Oh, God. If they've taken it to the extreme, I love a good himbo. Right. Like a good Channing Tatum in 21 Jump Street. Yes. He's that's the stuff. Like an ideal himbo. Oh, my God. I freaking love himbos. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like Barbie. You hear that, himbos? Ken? Himbo. Hey, himbos. Come on down. Uh, there's not much trivia about this. It was actually shot in Philadelphia. Um, it was a John nice. Wanamaker's department store. I do not know what that is. It's a Macy's now. Oh. Um, and then originally the lead part was supposed to be an older lonely storekeeper. Oh, no. It's that would have been much creepier. Yeah. No offense, but this this makes more sense. Yes. Age wise. Uh, Anna, would this be better or worse than the same with Jonathan Taylor Thomas's Jonathan? I think worse because I think we needed himbo energy. Mm-hmm. And I don't think, no offense, don't think Jonathan Taylor Thomas has ever really given himbo. No. I can't picture him being a himbo. Like, I can only picture him as being sarcastic. Uh, Zachary Ty Bryan, maybe? Oh, before he turned kind of weird? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see it. Um, What about Jimmy Stewart as Hollywood? Oh, that could have been <laughs> unique. An old gay? Uh, yeah, it's obvious to this country girl that you're an A number one creative freak. Mm-hmm. Imagine pretending to be a stock boy when you're you're a major artiste. Hey Amen. Give am it to us, Jimmy. So jealous. Mm-hmm. It's me, Hollywood Montrose. My Jimmy Stewart is a very odd mixture of him and Don Knotts. If it makes you feel better, I can't do a Jimmy Stewart at all. Gage can do one. Mm-hmm. I just can't at all. I can't do impressions, really. Um, other than, uh, you know, I can do a little bit of a Kermit. A little bit of a Miss Piggy. You got to you, you gotta do the Kermit. I, I know the Miss Piggy. I can only do their names. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I'm embarrassed. I'll do it. Do you want me to do mine? Yes. Hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. Oh, Kermit the Frog. Br- I can do Beautiful. Miss Piggy better. That's pretty good. I can't do Miss Piggy. Oh, you gotta work on it. I love Miss Piggy. She's an icon. I can do uh, Elmo. Oh. I need to. One second. I need to clear my throat for this. <clears> throat> Give us Elmo. Hi, I'm Elmo. What the, what the <laughs> fuck, Dan? That is not what Elmo sounds like. No offense. No, no I can do Elmo. Um, I, I'm Elmo. Oh, oh, thank God. That is good Elmo. Thank you. It's like he's he's in the room with us right now. And is Elmo, <laughs> you're in therapy, and is this Elmo in the room with us right now? Tell him. Literally. Tell him I'm here. Elmo. <laughs> it went from is Elmo in the room with us to Elmo is in the room with us. And am I in the room with you right now? Oh my god, like this is so good I'm kind of getting the creeps. I love it. Wonderful. Um, on a scale of one to five mannequins, what do you give it? One and a half. Wow, that then. is low than I thought. Two for vibes. Okay. <laughs> I give it it a... was fun, but like I also got bored a little bit. I'm sorry, Anna. It's no life size. No, it's not. I think at honestly after Mannequin Two, we got to do life size. Uh, yes, thank you. I was gonna make you do it. Yeah. Um, yes. I give it three. I think it's fun. It's nothing, okay. nothing incredible or anything, but it's fun. Three off of vibes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And we can play together. <laughs> Standing That's up forever. Nothing's yeah, gonna nothing's stop gonna us gonna now. Stop us now. Anna and Five I did that, sing honestly. the entire song as it played. As you should. 
I sprouted the lyrics. Gage was like, stop. And I was like, no, the power of love cannot be stopped. You didn't turn to him immediately and go, look into your eyes, I see a paradise. No, he sighed heavily because I love 80s music and he does not care either way for it. Ah, uh, too bad. I've just, I get on these kicks where I'm like, oh, I'm listening to Yacht Rock and I wish I was on a yacht right now. And he's like, that's not how like boating actually is. And I'm like, but in my heart, that is how it is. So. <laughs> oh, wonderful. That's it for this week's episode of In Conclusion. Uh, if you want to find us on social media, we're on Facebook and Twitter at and in conclusion on Instagram at inconclusion podcast on Patreon at patreon.com slash in conclusion. I am on Twitter at Dan O'Keefe 86 and on TikTok at not Dan O'Keefe. Anna, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram at Otomus Prime 8 when either you can find me on the app for me or Twitter at Autobots Roll Out, capital O for auto, capital B for bots, capital R for roll and O and roll and the O and out are zeros. Wonderful. Phew. We will be back next week with Mannequin on the move. Mm, That's two man, two kin. Mannequin two on the move. Sorry. Can't wait. We'll be back with that. In the meantime, everybody stay safe and have fun. Bye bye. Bye. Was this how it was for you? Do you feel a little bit like, oh? Creative Land Podcast.